So one explanation for uh, limited stock market participation you haven't touched upon is uh, uh, aversion to uncertainty. So if you know uh, the probability distribution of stock market returns, then uh, you maximize your expected utility and you get your optimal share, but you always invest in the stock market. If you are not sure about the distribution of stock market report, return, so what you do, you uh, maximize your expected utility over the worst possible outcome. So if you're extreme ex uh, aversion to uncertainty, then you end up not uh, investing in the stock market uh, at all. And uh, I don't know about the experimental evidence for uh, uh, the degree of uncertainty aversion with different uh, uh, wealth levels, but it could well be that the, the richer you are, you are, the less uncertain averse, aversion you are, and that could explain part of your results. Take the second one at the back. Yeah. Uh, this is fascinating. On the comment of uh, the discussion about trying to control for the sort of beta risk, I think it's very difficult because people are investing in all sort of assets that you cannot measure easily a beta. But what you could try to see is whether the wealth of the, the richer varies more uh, in the time series with stock market. So get a sort of a measure, more aggregate measure of whether they are just more exposed to the cycle. Take over here. So, uh, two questions. The first is uh, following up on what Shetel was saying that maybe we should, uh, the people who are less able to manage their wealth and earn high returns should give it to someone. He suggested the government. There's another natural candidate, which is the wealth management industry. So, do you have any thoughts on why some of these people aren't handing over their portfolios to, say, a fund manager or a wealth manager who could do it better for them? And then the second question is, um, you're asking where does this diversity in returns come from, and it seems like a lot of it comes from something you call skill. Skill must be information, right? There's no other way to systematically buy assets that will have high returns. It's not a measurable strategy unless you know something about the returns. And I point that out because if it's information, if some people have higher quality signals or lower noise signals, that implies a cross-equation restriction between returns and dispersion. Right, because noisy signals will give you low average returns because you can't choose your investments very wisely, but the same noise will lead to heterogeneity in signals. Of course, people put less weight on those noisier signals, and you can actually get lower dispersion in returns from noisier signals, and the quantitative mapping between those two tells you something about how uncertain people were to begin with. So it would be interesting to use this data and impose actually the cross-equation restrictions from an information model to back out you know, how much information, how much signal quality are we talking about, and how uncertain were people to begin with. Reggie, do you want to start answering? Sure, and sure, uh, Chetel, sure, and then we'll Peter Diamond has a question. He'll take it. Okay. I was just, maybe we do the first set of questions and then. Okay. So well, uh, then we'll take, we'll take thank you very much. I think I don't know whether the the exercise passed the test of the expert because you know the discussion is from Norway, so he knows the data much better than me, uh, and he knows the potential and the shortcoming. So uh, I think uh, even uh, uh, such a good data set has uh, shortcomings, and he was pointing out to uh, some of uh, uh, some of them. Um, so but thanks for the comment. We have been uh, discussing on uh, uh, some of uh, these issues uh, before, and I think we'll uh, uh, go on trying them. So uh, on, the, uh, on the fact that we are missing uh, uh, essentially two components of the balance sheet of the house, which are extremely important. The first one is housing, and the other is the counterpart of the funding of the financing of the house, that is the, uh, the mortgage. That is clearly important. Precisely because you know it carries a huge weight uh, uh, in the wealth of uh, um, large uh, share of the families, not those below median, but those uh, above median up to the let's say the 90 percentile. Then the very wealthy they all uh, housing, but you know the share goes down dramatically, and they are heavily invested in. Uh, uh, in private businesses. Uh, so we are uh, collecting the data, we are almost done, and 
uh, the next version of the paper will include both housing uh, and uh, mortgages. I think uh, when uh, you include that, uh, uh, the main feature what I learned from, uh, uh, from the first results that we have is that uh, um, so in, in you scale people at that point by net worth instead of you know, total assets. Uh, what you see is that uh, there are people at the bottom of net worth. Uh, there are two, 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 two types of people. You know, people that uh, are highly leveraged, so they borrow and spend it out. The, they eat everything, okay? Those realize negative returns. Uh, then there are people that uh, use uh, the uh, uh, the market in order to borrow and invest. And those uh, have relatively high returns. So it is important to have the whole population, including the very bottom of uh, uh, people in terms of uh, net worth, because otherwise you are missing uh, those that potentially, at a certain point, because they can exploit the market, borrow, and invest in uh, you know, good opportunities, uh, they will climb uh, the wealth uh, uh, later. So that is the main, uh, I think, in terms of substantive uh, uh, contribution that we get once uh, uh, we had uh, uh, the uh, debt. Um, so in terms of, uh, so we are not providing a, a, what is behind this uh, persistent component. There could be many sources, could be information. That is one uh, potential explanation, I think, uh, uh, would explain a bunch of uh, features, including the sharp ratio. So the main uh, um, uh, feature of information in that can uh, rationalize uh, a higher uh, sharp ratio among better informed people, the correlation with uh, wealth, uh, because you know, uh, wealthier people tend to be, uh, have more incentives to face the cost of information gathering, and so they should be, um, uh, you know, be able to earn a higher uh, uh, share price. And I think uh, I am thinking about, you know, trying to go in the direction that you are saying. And it is true that uh, uh, depending on how you model information gathering, you can reduce uh, the conditional uh, variance of uh, returns and so earn higher sharp ratios uh, that way. But you can use information in order to spot uh, different profit opportunities. And so, you know, you can uh, earn uh, higher uh, uh, sharp ratios because the numerator uh, uh, goes up. So there are both channels and I think they are both interesting uh, and have different implications for the uh, cross-sectional uh, uh, cross violence. That is uh, one thing that we are planning to, uh, to do in a different project, in a different paper. Um, on the limited stock market participation, there are many explanations uh, uh, for that, including you know, um, uncertainty and so on. I, I think uh, one reason why that is important to sort of uh, point out uh, is because it can provide a rationale for why uh, people differ in their uh, portfolio composition. So if you are uh, averse uh, to ambiguity, what you do, you, uh, or if you have uh, you know, limited in attention and you want to economize in information, you tend to specialize your portfolio. So you tend to uh, get away from full diversified portfolio, look at a bunch of uh, stocks uh, and focus on them. So it can explain you know, heterogeneity, departure from uh, the standard uh, uh, fully diversified portfolio, specialization uh, in a single, uh, in, a, in a bunch of, uh, uh, of uh, things. Uh, on the fund managers, uh, uh, so I think that is uh, uh, how, you know, poor people and uninformed investors uh, uh, should manage their assets. So there should be an industry that uh, helps them out. The problem is that uh, that industry is costly. Uh, it's not for free. You know, you are uh, taxed. Uh, and usually the fee that you pay is uh, of the order of 200 basis points. Uh, so systematically, <laughs> you know, uninformed people that rely on, uh, uh, on fund managers, uh, they are less than informed people that can manage on, the, uh, on their own. In addition, you know, you are also exposing to potential abuses. So you can get the, uh, you know, the advice. Sometimes the advice is also distorted, so. Okay, I think I would uh, stop here. Uh, uh, um, I just want to say that um, um, the, in, in terms of the, it, it's also important to keep in mind that, uh, what, 80% of the households own a house here? Um, and over this period, um, the return on that 
asset has been amazing. Um, um, just because you happen to start when the when the housing market bottomed out. In terms of the, the beta risk, so what I had in mind was to to look at people, for example, with only liquid, uh, with only financial assets. Mm -hmm. I think it's perfectly doable. But yeah. there were some more questions. Yes. There's one question over there, Peter. It would be interesting, I think, and maybe you know, to compare the persistent returns of your high wealth people with the persistent returns of the Norway Sovereign Wealth Fund. Um, yeah, that is uh, definitely public. Uh, and um, so in this revision, we are also adding uh, the wealth in, the, uh, in this uh, fund. That is clearly, you know, is shifting uh, pro quota. The, uh, but it, it is important because uh, in terms of uh, differences across individuals, uh, uh, the return on the fund uh, for a poor individual is super important. It carries a very large weight. For a very wealthy, it doesn't matter. So it's going to shrink uh, the heterogeneity in returns once we, we include uh, uh, that component. And also, I think we are going to add also pension wealth that probably is kind of uh, uh, redistributes a lot in terms of returns, away from the wealthy and more to, to the poor. So once you include all these uh, type of kind of public assets, you are going to see a little bit less uh, uh, diversity, heterogeneity in returns. But I think that the, we haven't done the, uh, the comparison that you are suggesting that we can definitely do. I'm over there. Here, I'm here, and then we'll have to close, just looking at the time, sorry. I think we're done. Yeah. Is the mic working? Ah, sorry, the lady over there. <laughs> uh, one of Kettle's uh, comments, uh, this, this issue of the very high returns for the wealthy people, I would have thought that you could uh, rule out stock picking as an explanation just because they're pretty good estimates of, for example, hedge fund you know, advantages in terms of sharp ratios, and they might be there, but they're not so big. So it seems like that's something that... Yeah, uh, we haven't looked into the, uh, the details. So what I see in the data is the following. So most of uh, the sharp ratios uh, for the wealthy, uh, they are coming for the investment in, uh, in their private businesses. So I suppose that the sharp ratio of Zuckerman is above market. Uh, that is my guess. I haven't computed it, but that would be my, my guess. So it's not a mystery that some people beat the market. Uh, there are people that are above average. So uh, that is not, uh, maybe systematically, you know, in 200 years, uh, it will uh, converge. But over uh, a relatively long period of time, I think that is not uh, particularly surprising. So uh, I think most of the difference between uh, the sharp ratio that you have in mind on the Oslo Stock Exchange and the ones that we are uh, measuring is different in, uh, uh, is difference that came from, uh, uh, from the fact that, you know, some uh, entrepreneurs, they have access uh, to assets uh, that don't belong to the, to the Oslo Stock Exchange, I think. Oh, okay, but uh, you could look at, in, in, in your uh, data, yeah. when, you, when you look at people who don't own private equity, yeah. you have, find the same, in fact, actually a higher short ratio. So, so what, what would make me happy is a graph that shows at all percentiles are below the market sharp ratio, uh, but yeah, yeah, for yeah. the for the yeah. for the wealthy they are less so. And then uh, you know, for for when you include private equity, it can be whatever. Yeah. I think on, on that note, just looking at the time, and Luke has already ended to me. I think I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you, Chetil, and uh, thank you. we'll close for the next session. Thank you. <laughs>